So in class, we already began discussing inorganic compounds with talking about salts. We're going to move now into the second type of inorganic compound that we would like to discuss, um, which is water. So we're going to break down water structure again and its special properties. So let's first start by reviewing the chemical structure of water. If you remember, H2O contains two hydrogens and one oxygen molecule. Now, we first talked about this in terms of covalent bonding because these oxygen and hydrogens are covalently bonded to one another. Reminder that covalent bonds are always shown as a solid line here. And so that we know that those are covalent bonds. Now we also talked about this when we talked about hydrogen bonding because if you remember this oxygen molecule, it is significantly electronegative, which means that the electrons that are shared between the oxygen and the hydrogen, those electrons will spend more time rotating around the valence shell of the oxygen than it will these hydrogens. And so because of that pull of electrons towards this oxygen, we say that this end, the oxygen end, is slightly negative and the hydrogen ends are slightly positive. So this is described as a dipole. And so a dipole just means that it has slightly negative ends and slightly positive ends. We sometimes draw an arrow beside water molecules showing that there is a pole of electrons towards that oxygen, towards that oxygen, so um, creating that slightly negative end. We have also said that water is a polar molecule. And if you remember, we talked about covalent compounds, covalent bonds, and polar and nonpolar molecules. We said that the ones that were asymmetrical, meaning that this degree here isn't a 90 degree difference, that the, it is a slightly bent molecule, and therefore it is a polar molecule. Now what a typical question we would ask you would be, how does the polarity of water produce hydrogen bonding? So why don't you take a moment, press pause on this video, try and write out your answer for this um, question, and then check back in and we will discuss it. So I always believe that in a description, if you can draw a picture, it's probably always a good idea. So what I've already drawn here are two separate water molecules. And what I've shown you here is here is that partial negative or slightly negative. Here is that slightly positive end of water molecules. This is created due to the unequal sharing of electrons, meaning that the oxygen holds those electrons more often than those hydrogen atoms are able to do, which is the unequal sharing of electrons. So it creates those partial negative and partial positive end. It creates that dipole. So it creates a dipole. Reminder that this here, this is our covalent bond. There was my squeaky pen again. Covalent bond. And so because of these slightly positive and slightly negative ends, there is going to be an attraction based off the law of attraction. Opposites attract. Positives are attracted to negatives. And so with that, we will see that there is a attraction, and I'm going to show this attraction by including these in dots, and these are the purple dots I'm putting in. So this is the hydrogen bonding. So it's due to the polarity of this molecule creating the dipoles to allow for a slightly positive end to be attracted to a slightly negative end of another molecule. So this is important that these, this is the hydrogen bonding hydrogen bond, and it occurs between water molecules, not within one water molecule, but between water molecules. So just check over your notes and see if you could answer that effectively. So I've included this diagram just to give me the opportunity to explain the difference 
um, one additional difference between hydrogen bonding and ionic and covalent bonding. Now, ionic and covalent bonding bonds are pretty strong bonds, whereas hydrogen bonds are relatively weak bonds. However, it is in their numbers that they gain the strength. So here, this diagram here is showing you a bunch of water molecules. And you'll see between every oxygen molecule will be hydrogen bonded to a hydrogen molecule. And so you can see it always involves the hydrogen to an oxygen, the oxygen to another hydrogen. So it's the strength in all of these bonds and the number of them that allow these special properties of water that we're about to um, get into. So there are four special properties of water that I would like to describe within Biology 12, although there's a few more which we're not going to discuss directly. So the first one is that water is a temperature regulator. Now, for those of you who have taken chemistry, you might already have an idea of what specific heat capacity is. Without getting into too much detail, what this means is that water can take on a lot of energy to increase its temperature, but loses that energy slowly. So this keeps our body temperatures consistent. So our bodies are constantly working to maintain that about 37 degrees Celsius. Hence the reason why we sweat when we get too hot. Um, our body, due to the um, water vaporization, we sweat to release that heat energy. And when we get too cold, we shiver to increase that, um, increase that body temperature. So the second one is that water is usually described as the universal solvent. So this is based off the fact that like dissolves like, which means that polar substances will dissolve other polar substances. So let's remind ourselves of the structure of water again. Here's the structure of water. Here's the oxygen with its slightly negative and the hydrogens with their slightly positive ends. Well, this slightly negative will not only be attracted through hydrogen bonding to other water molecules and their slightly negative, slightly positive ends, but it will also be attracted to any substance that is positive. So let's take for our example, let's take salt. So sodium chloride. So this is just regular table salt. So this table salt is composed of sodium and chlorine. Now when we say we put it into water and it dissolves, we say that the salt is being ionized, which means it's being pulled apart into its individual ions. This is due to this oxygen molecule here and its slightly negative end will be attracted to the sodium and it's positive and due to its positivity. And here we have the slightly positive ends being attracted to the chlorine, which is negative. And so this salt molecule will be pulled apart, or I should say this salt compound will be pulled apart, and the sodium and the chlorine will be ionized. And so therefore it acts as the universal solvent dissolving uh, the solutes. So within the human body, water also acts as a lubricant. Now, I'm going to talk specifically about the lungs, but this also takes place in the mouth and in the joints. At the very bottom part of our lungs when we take air in, there's this structure way down here which we'll get into, which is called the alveoli. This is where we have the exchange of gases, um, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, this oxygen and carbon dioxide will only diffuse across this membrane and therefore being taken up into our bloodstream if that is a moist membrane, if that is um, moist with water. So in that way it acts as a lubricant to allow things to slide past one another as in the example of joints. Our joints have water within them and allows um, the bones to move past one another. And the fourth special property that I would like to discuss is that water has a high surface tension, which means due to those hydrogen bonds, those water molecules really cling together because they have strength in numbers. This is why you see these water skeeters here and they're able to walk on water because of the high surface tension. It's also the reason why you can actually get a paper clip to float on top of water. Um, 
There are also a few other properties um, of adhesion and cohesion that we'll experiment with in um, our lab, but um, I'm not going to necessarily direct your attention to them as a special property of water. So that's it for special properties of water, and um, signing off now.